The Celestials as of now are the oldest known sentient entities in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and though little has been seen of them so far, we know that they possess virtually limitless power by human standards. Throughout the course of the MCU, sightings of Celestials have been exceedingly rare, but how many have we actually seen in the MCU so far? And what do we know about that? Well, stick with us today, watchers of the Marvel Multiverse, and let's comb the MCU timeline and see if we can find all the currently known Celestials, as today we will break down every single known Celestial in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Perhaps the most well-known one is the Prime Celestial, Arishem, otherwise known as the Judge. Arishem first made his debut in the recent Eternals film, and his inclusion gives us the most insight in the Celestials as a whole as a race. In the MCU, it was said that Arishem himself created the first sun, and was the gateway to the creation of life itself, predating even the Big Bang and the existence of the six singularities that would form into the Infinity Stones. Arishem's experimentation has led to the development of Deviants, the Eternals, and presumably many other sentient life forms due to his contribution to the creation of the universe. Universe. In the comics, however, the moniker of the Judge was designated because he was one of two Celestials that had the ability to judge whether or not a planet had the right to continue on living, which seems to deviate from the modern MCU where he is the only one. By MCU standards, it seems as if this is Arishem's first judgment of Earth when in the comics he has judged Earth no less than four separate times. He measures the evolutionary progression of his experiments and continually decides whether or not they can be allowed to continue on evolving. And any planets that he deems unworthy are reset and repurposed to host brand new life forms and experiments. Aside from Arishem, perhaps the second most widely known celestial is Ego, the living planet. Who is the first living celestial that we actually meet in the flesh in the MCU, as the father of Peter Quill? Ego served as the antagonist for the second Guardians of the Galaxy film, but his inclusion also gave us an in-depth look at the life of this particularly strange celestial. By all accounts, Ego is perhaps the most unique of the Celestials for a number of different reasons, but part of this is likely due to the nature of his MCU debut. In the comics, Ego the Living Planet was not actually a Celestial. But the MCU adopted traits from Ego the Living Planet in the comics while granting him the title of a Celestial. The interesting part about Ego is that he himself does not know where he actually came from. He simply states that his earliest memories were drifting through the emptiness of space, utterly alone as he began to slowly learn how to manipulate the molecules and compounds around him. Eventually, he created a shell that later became the sentient planet that we see in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, therefore Ego the Living Planet. This makes Ego one of the most unique Celestials in that his body does not resemble that of any other Celestials that we see in the MCU and is quite different. All other Celestials are distinctly humanoid, and they wear specialized armor that all resemble one another in some fashion. But Ego is a deviation from this trend, which grants him abilities that seem to be unique only to Ego and that the other Celestials cannot use. Part of this is that Ego can create extensions of himself, varying from splinters of his consciousness to entirely organic avatars that he can send across the galaxy. And despite the incredible power of the Celestials, Ego seems to be the only one that can actually do this. Even though Arishem has a specialized world forge where he can create new iterations of the Eternals and Deviants, he himself cannot splinter his consciousness so far as we know. Earlier within the Guardians franchise, we also meet with the Collector, and although the Collector himself has not been confirmed to be a Celestial as of yet, his base of operations resides on the planet called Nowhere. It's interesting to briefly note that some avid fans have theorized that the Collector and the Grandmaster might also be Celestials, but this is yet to be confirmed in the MCU. Though they are elders of the universe in the comics, there is little evidence to suggest that in the MCU that they have been repurposed and made them into honorary Celestials. Nonetheless, we thought this was an interesting tidbit to add. While the Exitar mining colony now resides on nowhere, before this, it was once the head of a now deceased Celestial, and quite literally one of the first Celestials that we ever get to see. Little is currently known about this particular dead Celestial though, including the circumstances around his death. But we do know, however, the cause behind the mining colony that would eventually come to reside within his severed head. When the Tyvan group sent a mining expedition to extract bone marrow from the Celestial, as well as brain tissue and spinal fluid from this incredibly powerful being, they found it to be a safe haven of sorts for their underground operations. Now the Head of Nowhere serves as a lawless hub for the intergalactic criminal underworld, where rules don't apply and money rules all. Within this criminal underworld, however, there is a bar known as the Boot of Jamaya, which is a reference to another incredibly powerful Celestial. 
While some have taken this to mean that the disembodied head once belonged to Jemiah the Analyzer, it's possible that this is simply a reference to another comic book celestial. Jemiah, however, is among the Celestials that can be seen when Arisham details the nature of the Celestial existence to Cersei in the Eternals film. Though this doesn't overtly prove or disprove of connection between Nowhere and Jemiah, Jemiah is incredibly powerful in his own right, and we believe that he is not in fact the head of Nowhere. On screen, Jemiah is shown to help Arisham create brand new galaxies, but in the comics, his duty was to oversee the progression and evolution of various life forms, and offer his professional testimony to Arisham to make his final judgments. The Celestials are notorious for conducting experimentation on sentient life from across the galaxy, and Jemiah's job was to assess the quality of their progression and report back to Arishem, who would then judge whether or not they were still worthy of continuing along their evolutionary paths. Therefore, this is why he garnered the name of the Analyzer. Eson the Searcher was the first known user of the Power Stone in the MCU. As the Collector shows the Guardians a recording of Eson using this incredibly destructive weapon to annihilate the entirety of a planet. While there was little context behind this in the MCU, Eson's comic book counterpart might shed some light on why exactly he did this. In the original source material, his duty was to seek out worthy worlds to observe, and he had a universal eye that granted him the ability to see into the cosmos. Previously, many fans have theorized that he is serving as Arishem's executioner, going to the world deemed unworthy and purging them in order to start again. However, we do not believe that this is the case in the MCU, given the inclusion of the Eternals. As mentioned earlier, this seems to be Arishem's first judgment of Earth, and potentially his first judgment ever. The dialogue seems to hint that this is a new occurrence to him, and he is making the decision to judge a planet for the first time. Although it's possible, of course, that he has judged others. If this is his first, though, then it means that Eson likely is not destroying this planet at Arishem's command. And there is likely more going on here, though what exactly is hard to say. Moving on, we have Tiamut. The only appearance of Tiamut in the MCU did not do his comic book counterpart justice, as he never had the opportunity to develop a personality in the MCU. In the Eternals film, the titular band of heroes must stop the emergence of none other than Tiamat from destroying the planet, effectively killing him before he was ever truly born. And it is Tiamat that is within Earth. In the comics, however, Tiamat is known as the Communicator, and was personally responsible for the creation of Makari, as he was designed to be one of the most efficient travelers in the entire galaxy. Tiamut even sought to stage a coup against Arishem in the comics, doing so after he deemed Earth to be worthy of destruction. But Arishem dissented. This led Tiamut to believing that Arishem was actually malfunctioning, and in the conflict, the Celestials imprisoned Tiamut beneath a mountain on Earth. From here, he would be simply known as the Dreaming Celestial, and it's entirely possible that this was the inspiration behind making Tiamat the Celestial nested within Earth during the emergence in the MCU. Moving on, in the Eternals film, Arishem's history lesson not only gives us a look at Jemiah the Analyzer, but also Harrigan the Measurer. Little is known about Harrigan, even in the source material of the comic book lore, as his role is not very well defined at all, and he has also been shown observing different parts of different planets. Very few are actually sure what Harrigan even does. His title of the Measurer seems to indicate that he is a data collector who measures populations and statistics before sending this information to Nezar, the calculator. Nezar, who has also had a few brief seconds of screen time during Arishem's history lesson, is responsible for cataloging data and organizing information that is sent to him about respective planets and populations. Despite his highly intellectual duty, he is an incredibly powerful physical combatant and has showcased this on very few occasions though. During the fourth host of the Celestials, he was targeted by a Soviet missile, but he created an illusion within the minds of the Soviet soldiers and caused them to turn the weapon on themselves without ever engaging in direct combat with them. When battling the Asgardians, he demonstrated an incredibly powerful healing factor. During this fight, the Destroyer, with the Odin Sword within his grasp, severed Nezar's arms, which he grew back almost instantaneously. What's particularly interesting about the Celestials in the MCU, however, is that they seem unconcerned with the judgment of other planets, and their purpose seems to have deviated from that of the source material. In the MCU, they seem primarily concerned with the birth of new Celestials and the creation of life, not caring what happens after this life is created. If the events of the Eternals signify a turn of motivation, motivation for the Celestials, then the film might have had an even larger long impact on the MCU than we previously believed, as the plans of the Celestials changed. 
But anyway, my friends, what do you think of the Celestials? And in this video, who was your favorite that we outlined? Again, these are all of the current known Celestials in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Also, what Celestials from the Marvel Comics pages would you like to see make their jump into the MCU? As always, my friends, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button to assemble and join our team, and I hope you have a great day.